So I'm over at uh, Peter Nesbitt's uh, ON3 layout and uh, it's in Ottawa, Canada and uh, he's just starting to build this. It's a double deck layout and uh, I had painted the backdrop some time ago and one of the things that we looked at doing was something I had done on another layout which was having a look at this uh, fascia board here and instead of uh, leaving it a plain color which most of us do either green or black or gray or something like that to uh, actually paint on some foreground scenery and what we hope to do by that is uh, make this piece between the top and the bottom disappear to some degree and at the same time add some depth to the upper scene uh, by putting in uh, some some paintwork in, in front so, like in the past, uh, basically have the same palette, which is some uh, black and yellow. And we're going to use some different techniques and strokes just to basically create bush and grass. And I've put some brown here as well, so maybe what we can do is add some rock work uh, just to break up the scene a bit and, uh, and make it more interesting. I had done uh, had a little test piece here a while ago and basically what you have here is some uh, paint that's been a mix of the, the standard black, uh, Mars black with uh, medium yellow and by uh, just pushing and jabbing it in you create these uh, variations almost like a camouflage and that's what we are intending to do here is to camouflage the, the upper surface so we want to get some colors that closely match what you see here and uh, well let's give it a go and see what happens so I got a dry brush here I'm just going to stick it in the uh, the yellow take a little bit of black and mix it in and a little more yellow and you can see you start to pick up that uh, the green colors just give a little bit more in there it's kind of a dark green there a little bit lighter there so I got some dark and it's got some light and we start from the top and we work down so I'm just going to jab the scene here and as you can see we're starting to pick up the, the variations in green you want to keep the colors loose so they don't mix into one solid blend and so you don't want to go over it too much you notice by pushing like this the, the brush splays and that's what creates all the little lines in there that sort of make it look uh, like grass. Another technique is you can do little upstrokes like this as well and uh, that makes it more like a field and that that's a good effect and if you want you can just sort of clean out some areas and uh, generate something in front maybe some more bushes That's just showing some effect. And you can always go over it again and hide it if you don't like what you've been doing. And you want a little bit of variation, so you might want to just punch some dark black in here like so. Keep it on a bit of a 30 degree angle coming down. And uh, then you can just take bright yellow, pop it in on top. You can even go over the screws and uh, make some disappear. Pretty easy technique. Just like in any of the other painting, you should be able to do about six feet an hour. And uh, if you find that your brush is getting soft and you're not getting that uh, punchy grass like effect anymore, just uh, grab a new brush. And you can see by throwing in some black, it creates some variation. Now if you want to change that up a bit, you can go in a little bit later and just uh, after it dries and, and do something different. There we go. You can add a bit of brown into the mix if you wish. I just added some brown here. Um, a little bit of black. What happens when you add uh, brown to the black, you get a warm black. Sort of a different color there and if you add green to it. It makes just slight variations in the color. You don't want it to all look the same. And then you can go back in with the, the yellow again. And
crimson color over top. And you can see on top here he's got some plaster scenery and it's not colored yet so if you want you can punch some of this in here just to give an idea of what the finished product might look like when you mix uh, your ground scenery in with your fascia colors. After a while when it, the brush gets wet all you really need to do is to dab directly into the yellow or into the black to create the different shades. You can just go over top slightly there. It's not an exact science that's for sure you just basically dab away at it. See where it's a little bit dark down here and just put some green on top. and get around the screw a little bit black down here towards the bottom dab into the yellow and get some around that screw there and just finish along here And it just creates a pretty simple effect. That screw again. Concerned about getting the angles right, you can always go over a top on a curve and just add a bit of black or something just to muddle the look a little more. See how that bright yellow that is? Just you can go right on top with a bit of black, darken it down a bit. And you get some brown there on the edges, you can. Try to match up the brown a little bit more. Just to make it start to... If you find that uh, on this side where the real plaster is, there's not a good match, you can go right over top of the real plaster uh, just a little bit so that it's not quite as noticeable. And the bridge is going to go in there and stuff. So there, just kind of meshes the two. So it doesn't look like a straight line down there. It wasn't too hard to do. Add a little bit of black in there. Let's get this around the corner of the screw. Make sure all the white is out. And always go back, I guess, and get in those little holes later after when it dries. Yeah, so have a look at that. You can see some spots where you might want to just dab a little bit of paint in. Let it dry, and we'll come back later and touch it up a bit. Might even use a smaller brush that can get into the screw hole a little bit better. So yeah, you can see I'm just putting some stuff up top here. You can come and have a look at that. And just to see how it would meld over once the ground form is in there. 
it's not a bad idea to, to just put some paint right over top of the edge there in case you know when you put the real ground dirt down you miss a spot you don't want the white showing through maybe some brown up in here some black yeah some yellow put that right on top There's no right or wrong way to do this, it's just a case of punching in the color. As long as it's very it got some variation. Maybe a little bit brighter yellow in here. See, I'm sort of painting down on a on an angle. Seems better than just going straight across. Gives it more of a hilly look, I guess. You can hear the water is now running in the waterfall. We're down in the basement, so you get the all the house effects from upstairs. That's okay. I'm not doing this for the sound effects. It's not like you're trying to listen to your prize locomotive or something. So just for fun here I've added a couple more uh, colors, some darker yellow and some uh, sort of a brownish gold color and I thought by doing so it might just create some variation in this. We'd just try it out and see what it's like. It's always fun to experiment when you're on the go. I'll just start with a little bit of what I was working with there. Maybe I'll just try a little bit of this and mix it over here and see what that looks like. See, it kind of makes it more of a golden yellow. You can try some of this brighter orange too. And uh, you can see that it adds a few highlight spots that you otherwise wouldn't have. You know, maybe something like that. You can go back over some spots and just add some variation in where you see some spots you don't like just dab in a bit here and there it's nice as it starts to set up and dry it's quite easy to go over top and uh, just create some variations in the colors something missing up there just flash a little bit in there and it just takes away the spots that seem a little blah see down and over here there's a bit of a dark spot so just touch a little touch of each here maybe just punch in some brown some of that darker brown there beigey brown and orange as you can see I'm just mixing it in there a bit and it just makes that little bit of camouflage color that otherwise looks kind of blah yeah. There's some brighter yellow up in here. And uh, you can just dab a little bit of black in there and it changes everything. What's really interesting about this effect, you know, you can come along where you're going to have your little toggle switch put in the hole. You can go right in the hole and paint green in there. And it basically can almost make it disappear. If you find it's too dark you can add some yellow. You're just trying to get rid of the white there and yeah, it just takes it out. It's kind of neat. Painting out the holes. Maybe a little bit of orange down in here, maybe a bit up in here just to brighten it up a little. I call it orange, but it's really just a dark yellow. 
mix the two together, get some variation in there. Maybe a little bit of black, darken it down a bit. You see that just basically disappears. Which doesn't help you if you're looking to throw a switch in a hurry, I guess, but I think the switches will probably be just a raw metal color anyway. And just coming along pretty good. You want to sort of hit it at a 90 degree angle, if not then you find that the brush splays out at the wrong angles. You want it to sort of explode out, to give it a bushy effect. These uh, brushes I'm using here are made in China. They're uh, made by a company, I guess they call it uh, Noble. Yeah, it's a pure bristle. It's probably like a hog's bristle or something like that. And uh, this one here happens to be a number 10. You can use a number 10 or 11. The bigger brush, the bigger splay. And I have probably close to a dozen of these that I've picked up over the years when I've done some backdrop painting clinics and I find having more than one brush really useful because as they get soggy the uh, splayed effect kind of starts to disappear and once you're not happy with it it's probably best to just set the brush aside and go to a new one so like on one brush there I've probably done about eight feet roughly. But I'm starting to get a little bit perturbed with this brush here. It's not bad but it's losing its effect. It's kind of going on just like a straight blob rather than uh, sort of the grainy effect that I'm after. If you go back you can see sometimes in here there's some white streaks where the paint has settled out. You just dab in some new color on top helps fill it in but sometimes it's nice to have a bit of white and yeah you know, you're always going to have trouble with the screw holes but you can go back with even a fine brush later I'm not worried about that right now it's better to work with the big stuff and then tackle the little stuff later um, so yeah so this brush here is getting kind of soft I'll just uh, set it up here let it dry out a bit and uh, I'll grab another one. This one's a little bit bigger. That's okay. This is a number 12 and this is made by Squirrel which is another made in China type brush. But you can see the end is even bigger on this one. And because it's dry it, and it uh, doesn't have that softness in it, it really holds the color differently. You can see that it's very a lot, has a lot of lines in it. So you want to keep punching some additional swirls and twirls in there to soften it down. It's a little brighter. That's okay. You don't want it all looking the same all the way along. So going from dark to light to dark to light is fine. And if you find there's too much of that you can go back later and maybe put some dark stuff in as well. You can see with the number 11 brush going from one size to a larger size, the uh, little punch sizes, the circles that you're hitting with your brush are quite a bit bigger. That's okay. They don't have to all be the same.
happily painting along here. Usually when I'm doing these backgrounds to help the time go and to get the pace right, I have music playing. But, uh, not today because uh, I guess we just never thought about it. Usually there's some music on the go and surprisingly depending on the type of music that you uh, put on you get different effects. Put on rock music you're painting will be much bolder, more striking. You put on classical, it becomes a lot softer. I guess it's because your touch becomes a little soft. It doesn't matter uh, where you work. You don't have to do the one full area and finish it. I guess the real key here is that I like to work from the top down on 30 degree angles. So come down like this kind of thing. And uh, this is a little browner here. That's okay. Get that uh, being ambidextrous, get tired with one hand, you can switch and go to the other. It's one thing about blobbing paint on, you don't have to be exact, so. Getting in there is not such a difficult task. I always love the way that closes like that when you're squeezing it. There. Bit more black. So, what do you think? You got any questions? Sometimes you get a brush that uh, just doesn't seem to be doing what you want it to for you. If you don't like it, just get rid of it and grab another one. I find this one's just too uh, loose. It explodes all over the place. You can see this one here is another number 12, but the bristles are closer together, so I should get a better punchy effect with this brush. So one thing that's nice about having lots of brushes. Don't feel like you have to go with the one brush. You can see this one's a lot tighter. Yeah. You can follow the contours of the land a bit if you want. Since this is kind of going down. Punch them in like so. A little bit, I used a little bit more of the brown in that with the yellow. And it just changes the color. And that's good. Some of that down here. And grab some black, some yellow. Sometimes just by doing that, it suggests maybe some rock forms. just keep doing more of the same. It's interesting that uh, when you suggest something like this, 
people, because they've never really seen it before, have never really tried it, they're reluctant just to grab a brush and, and go for it. But in some ways, it's not a big deal because if you don't like it, you can always just take your old color of gray or black house paint that you were going to use on your fascia and just go right on top of it and put it back the way it was. But if you're after this effect, you, you can give it a try. See if it's what you're looking for in your layout. It sure helps, I think, in many ways of blending the upper and lower level. Because sometimes there's, it appears that there's more fascia, fascia showing than layout. Especially on the upper level, where your eye can only really see slightly over the top and onto the landforms, unless you're seven feet tall or six foot six like this layout owner here. He's pretty tall, so he gets to see more detail than maybe somebody that's 5'2 or 5'3. Now when you look back over there, you can see there's kind of a repetitive thing there where I blobbed. I'm just going to grab some orange there and just tap, maybe create a bush effect over top of it. There's something that's weird there too. So you can find dark spots that you don't particularly like. You can play around with them a bit. It's still wet, so it's not really all that hard to work with. Sometimes you get these long hairs sticking outside the brushes, like that one there. Just pull them off and set them down nicely. You don't want them to stick onto your fascia. You can see now that they're drying the finished effect there, sometimes there's a spot that gets missed. You just go back inside there and try to try to get it as best you can. you can. Do a couple highlight color blobs just lightly touching them on there. Just to add some color. This is kind of dark and dismal here. I didn't get any, how am I doing paint wise? Did I get any across my back from leaning? Or I'm pretty good so far? <laughs> Survived another day to fight. Interesting about paint is it dries, dries lighter. So even though it looks dark right now, it'll soften up quite a bit with time. All right, let me just stand back and have a look across the whole thing. <laughs> 